Hello guys, this is Travis Bailitz. Today I'm going to talk about admitting yourself to a psychiatric hospitalization and what it's like. <clears throat> Today I'm going to talk about the two hospitalization uh, hospitals that I've been admitted to. One is U of M Minnesota or University of Medical Center, Fairview, and the second one is Regents Hospital. They're a little bit different, but I'll talk about both. However, there's a lot more similarities and there are differences. Now, when you go into a, a psychiatric hospital, you pretty much go to the uh, you go to the front desk, tell them that you're suicidal, you tell them your story, and they'll check your blood pressure give you a brief history, ask for a brief history of what has happened to you, and then you go into an ER room. They take your clothes, you gotta strip your clothes, and then you end up into a uh, uniform, which is just blue or orange or, or green type pants, shirt, that's it. And then you'll be seeing a doctor, likely a psychiatrist, somewhere in between, uh, a social worker, a nurse, and probably a police officer and just someone on staff. Now you're in this hospital or in this area, this this ER room for a very long time. So you got to be pretty patient here. Rooms fill up fast, and there's not a lot of available, and it's really difficult to get in. However, once you're in, things are much better. It took me four to six hours, and I ended up probably in bed most of the time just waiting they do give you food they serve you food so that's always good then after that you end up in a wheelchair they bring up your belongings uh, and then you shoot up to one of the psychiatric floors no the truth is you can't have a cell phone you can't have your wallet and you can't have belongings with belts or ties like this <clears throat> so, when it comes to preparing, I should have probably done that first, but when it comes to preparing before you go to a psychiatric hospital, because it's more important to get there than think about what you can bring. If you have family, they can bring it, but for now, you can bring shirts without any ties, any type of shirts, and pants, jeans without belts, so you can bring that, so as long as they stay on your 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 body then things are fine so you can do that so they bring you up to a room usually at the actually all the time at the Regents Hospital you are bunked by yourself however in U of M you are bunked with someone else so that can be challenging too you gotta deal with someone if you aren't don't like it you'll just have to deal with it the truth is they got showers they'll give you they'll supply you with toothbrush they'll they'll supply you with soap and 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 shampoo so that's ready when you are first admitted into there you see a psychiatric nurse and she pretty much admits you in and you tell her story to her and you wait till the next morning. It's usually pretty late at night. Um, by the way, they don't give your medications in the ER. They do give it to you when you are situated in the hospital. So if you have suicidal ideations or some types of anxiety, you just have to stay calm as you can and then hopefully they can give you something when you're up at the psychiatric ward so she admits you they check your weight tell your story 
and then you go back into your room. So you have your room, there's a family room, there's a room where, there's an area where the, the, the nurses are, uh, usually you have a nurse that gives you your medication and she prescribes it to you every time. And then there's a family area, there's a dinner area, there's activity rooms, and that pretty much sums things up. So it's a wide area, family room, and rooms are on the outside. So usually the next morning, you end up seeing a psychiatrist, usually early in the morning. You wake up at 7 and it goes till like whenever you want. So that can be really, really challenging because some people don't get up that early. But they feed you breakfast, lunch, and dinner. It's usually pretty much whatever you can, whatever you want for that day, you can choose. So it's wide ranging. So usually it's not the most healthiest dinners, but because there's a lot, a lot of food, but you can usually choose what to eat and they don't gig you on that. Uh, when you meet with a psychiatrist, it's usually pretty intense because they start you on something right away. Uh, I had a fair amount of psychiatrists, and usually they're all right. Didn't have any too much problems with them, but uh, usually they want you to be safe, and and the nurses want you to be safe. So things like that nature, you want to have that structure throughout the day. So that's what they do is. There's things you can do throughout the day. First, you see your psychiatrist, or you eat dinner, or you eat breakfast first, and then they have a morning meeting, and then they have their first exercise group, and then they have there's some breaks in between, and then they have uh, a self care group or. They have a uh, activity crew, which is doing arts and crafts, and they have uh, an exercise group that you can go down and do activities or get out admitted outside just to go on a walk. It really depends on the hospital that you're in, though. Uh, I think that covers it for groups. So when it comes to family time, I know U of M is very, very, very strict. The only time that they allow visitation is like an hour. However, region is very flexible. Anyone can meet you any time of the day. It is noted that Regents Hospital has phones, so uh, if you need to call someone, you can call someone whoever you want as long as you know their number. You can't call outside of the state, but you can call anyone that is in initial contact or an emergency contact. You have to reschedule your own appointments, so they'll try to do that for you. But uh, for the most part, you got to be aware of what kind of appointments you have, whether it's a therapist, ILS worker, case worker, or something in between that is important for you, like psychiatrist. Um, I'm trying to think of all the things when it comes to incorporating a psychiatric hospitalization because there's a lot to it and people when they first go are usually kind of nervous and don't be nervous because the thing is you're there to try to get help, you're there to try to get stable, you're there to try to get yourself situated in a better state of mind. I think the most important thing when it comes to hospitalization is that you're honest, you're open, and you take charge of your own hospitalization stay and you tell them the truth on the things you're experiencing and you tell them the truth on how meds are treating you, how meds are interacting with you, what are their side effects, and what they can do to help benefit you later in the future. Oh yeah, it's also noted that there's sometimes 
when you meet with a psychiatrist there's a resident that is in charge of you it's not the greatest situation but it does give them experience just let them know like, honestly how you feel they usually uh, talk to the psychiatrist or the the one in charge and they'll usually go through things with you it is also noted that there's conference rooms that you can go to if you have family coming in you can set up a schedule that you want to meet with them and hopefully uh, continue to get your care from there So usually when it comes to hospitalizations I stare I stay anywhere from at least three days to three to four days to two weeks to fifteen days. So I've been there for quite a while. It's really up to you and the staff to determine when you stay and when you go. It's also noted that there's a relaxation room that you can just go and cool off with relaxing music and chairs. The settings are usually comfortable to be in. I had no problems when it came to dealing with staff. I didn't have any problems with psychiatrists. I didn't have any problems with uh, uh, the patients, although there was one guy that ended up taking a shower in my room, which is kind of weird, but I was just too tired that I really wasn't aware of it. So I've had seven or eight hospitalizations. I had them when I was, I thought they were necessary when I was a suicidal. Make sure that you are fully aware of your emotions because hospitalizations can be taxing and they can be somewhat boring than your normal structured day when you're at home. So when you go back home, you might be overwhelmed with all the things you have to do, but just be wary. Things aren't easy when you go there or here. Just note that you're going to have to stick through it and find a way to adjust to it all. Anyways, I hope you learned something. Take care. Have a good one. Bye.